Here's a name for you, golfer Phil Mickelson. Uh, if you're watching the British Open this weekend, you heard his name a lot. Uh, he is a big fan of math and science, believe it or not. In fact, uh, his wife, Alex, calls him an astronaut trapped in a golfer's body. He's a self-proclaimed math geek, uh, and uh, he's got some uh, arrangement with ExxonMobil where he's got the Mickelson ExxonMobil Teachers Academy camp going on right now. He joins me now from uh, New York. Phil, good to have you back. I was listening to, uh, to the coverage of, of the tournament. I was wondering, I, I knew you were on the show today, and I was saying, is he going to get back? Uh, but it's great to, great to see you here. Uh, this is something I think a lot of people don't know. What, what is your connection to, to math and science? Why are you so interested in this? Well, it's something I've always been interested in, and it's something that my wife and I are very passionate about. And we've realized that just a few years ago how the United States has been falling behind in these areas and that China and India have had, been having 55% of their college graduates in the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And in the United States, we've had only 15%. And so we've always been a world leader in these fields, uh, and, and we've been falling behind. So. Sorry, so for the last I mean, six yeah. years, we've been putting together this academy to try to, uh, at the ground, at the grassroots level here, third, fourth, fifth grade, inspire our students in the math and sciences. You, you and Amy do this in a very interesting way, Phil. You, uh, you're not teaching students directly; you're teaching their teachers. Uh, and I guess it's interesting because because school, school teachers, elementary school teachers, have a whole lot of subjects to cover. So you're trying to make them better at dealing with the math and science. That's exactly right because 90% of our teachers teaching science and math uh, don't have any accreditation. And when you don't feel confident in what you're teaching, a lot of times you just go by the book and you teach without passion. And so our, our academy here is giving these teachers the confidence, the ability, and the tools to go back to the classroom and inspire their kids, teach with passion, and feel confident with what they're, what they're teaching so that hopefully we can grasp their attention and keep it on all the way through college. All right, and you focus on, on some basic areas, uh, motion and forces, action and reaction, uh, uh, Newton's second and third laws, graphing on, on uh, coordinate plane, linear growth, measurement, estimation, and data collection. Not terribly complicated stuff, but can be intimidating and can sound boring. So what do you guys do? Well, we try to create fun ways to give the teacher an opportunity to, to grab the attention of the student. And so uh, we have some egg drop drills and some other uh, race, race car, balloon races, things that you, you can uh, get the attention of the kids first and foremost, and then be able to teach them about the laws of motion and so forth. All right. Now, how do you choose the teachers who, uh, who attend this? Well, we had 1,200 uh, teachers apply on our website, sendmyteacher.com, and we were able to select 200 for this week's academy. We have three academies with 200 teachers each, and that's the best way to get teachers in is through the website, sendmyteacher.com. And you've got a couple of academies. You had, uh, I, I, was it Houston and New Orleans, and now you've got the one in New Jersey? That's correct, and so this is uh, this will be our third one this year. We'll, we now will have 2,600 teachers that we've taught, uh, impacting over 40,000 students. Now, obviously, one of the issues with funding, particularly in public schools, is cost and the fact that uh, so many teachers have to put out their own money to, to better their own skills. Does this cost the teachers anything? Oh, no, no, no. This is all expenses paid, and, and we try to do it first class so that they have the nicest accommodations and they have the, the, uh, the best service because we want to treat these teachers like the true professionals that they are because they're the ones having the direct impact with our students. Okay, I have to ask you, does this give you some kind of an edge uh, on the golf course? I mean, clearly there are a lot of calculations that go into a, a good golf game. Uh, how do you apply your, your, uh, your love of math and science, your geekiness to golf? Well, it's important for me to understand my equipment, so I work with all the engineers at Callaway on my golf equipment, whether it's driver, golf ball, and we, we work on uh, moment of inertia and coefficient of restitution, all these things that help me drive the golf ball better. But I also use science, math, and statistics in helping me practice by, using, by understanding what, uh, what areas of, of the game are most important and stressing those. I, I realize that uh, the numbers show that short game is most important and that I've got to get the ball close to the hole, and so I spend 80% of my practice working on short game. Wow. Phil, what a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for the great work you do.